Neuroendocrine cancer, unfortunately, is a kind of an unusual disease. And the biggest problem about it is we don't get that much education. I remember I didn't, I'm not that old, and I graduated from medical school, and I got 45 minutes of it in four years. And as even in my training as a resident, I only got one case in all the years of surgery training I had. So I think one of the major unmet needs for neuroendocrine specifically is actually just education and awareness. A lot of people don't know. It's very common for patients to not get diagnosed for between three and nine years after their symptoms. So just making the diagnosis is very challenging. Now, don't get me wrong. If someone had diarrhea or some flushing or some abdominal pain, they went to their primary care physician's office, I would not expect them to think of neuroendocrine as their very first diagnosis. But the problem is if you don't think about the disease, you can never treat it correctly. And so I think just a little bit of awareness on the, from the patient's perspective and the physician's perspective or any caregiver's perspective is extremely important. So once we understand that neuroendocrine is here and it's here to stay and the numbers are definitely going up, understanding that we have to improve education, increase the number of providers and really educate them, I think that's an important thing. But something else we should consider too is how do we create you know, centers that are more experienced in neuroendocrine? I always try to preach that a neuroendocrine patient should see a neuroendocrine specialist. So how do we increase that? So that comes through training, and that comes through experience, and that comes through physicians being more willing, actually, to work with neuroendocrine patients. So that's something that's very important. And then, of course, it's extremely important for us to develop new therapies. It's very exciting because in the past few years, we've developed new things, new diagnostics, new treatments, which have significantly helped the survival of our patients. But now we need to keep going. There are patients who have very aggressive neuroendocrine cancers. We need more treatments for that. We also need to find ways for our practitioners and providers to work together. So how do we communicate to help with care? How do we develop more multidisciplinary teams where people can come together, as was mentioned before, so that we can provide all the different skills and all the different procedures and all the different treatments which can help our, our patients. So there's a lot to be done, but I think we're really on the right path. Treating neuroendocrine tumors in the community can be quite challenging for any number of reasons. It is difficult for a community provider to, to receive accurate pathologic grading and staging of these tumors in order to inform the best type of treatment. Many centers and practices don't have access to gallium dotatate imaging, and therefore the management of these diseases can be quite difficult. Um, for that reason, um, I think more expert attention is needed for pathology and also imaging to better understand how to accurately convey the essential information to our providers in the community so they can improve the care of their neuroendocrine tumor patients. One of the large unmet needs for our neuroendocrine tumor patients who receive their care in the community is how to provide multidisciplinary care in a challenging environment. And unfortunately, I think a lot of that uh, will depend on the oncologist to kind of seek out the input from his surgical colleagues, interventional radiology colleagues, and pathologists. You know, it's also, we have to probably get pathology interpretation of neuroendocrine tumors a little bit more uniform from center to center and, and able for them to convey the necessary information to their oncologists, which would include, you know, accurate uh, description of differentiation and grading, including KI-67. And we also need our, our imaging providers to be able to, when they perform a gallium dotatate scan, give the kind of important information to the referring medical oncologist. You know, is this a patient who has enough uptake on the somatostatin scintography to recommend somatostatin analog therapy, that it would be appropriate for them to go on to receive peptide receptor radiotherapy. Uh, these are some of the, uh, I think, general practice approaches that need to be conveyed to everyone. The one bit of advice I can give, if you have a new neuroendocrine patient, definitely be patient with them. Neuroendocrine is something that people don't really understand. And then the other thing to do is always partner with a neuroendocrine specialist. Find someone either in the region or even across the United States. Many neuroendocrine patients are definitely willing to travel. And sometimes, you know, you just don't have the tools in your own little office to do the, the correct diagnostics or treatments. So definitely think about sending the patient off. The good thing is they always need your help. They always need the local oncologist for treatments, for shots, for scans, for advice. And sometimes they get sick and they still need a local doctor. So it, think of it more as a team effort. 
where you have maybe a, a neuroendocrine specialist who can be, act as a coach and kind of give advice. But most of the work is done between the local physician and the patient. And that's really the team that we need to build.